the street With your head down low Only concentrating on what you know Brother, sister, let me tell you how to change your life From picking up change to society life Not that money that'll make you rich Or the gold, gold dollar that grants a poor man's wish Only the currency that God supplies And covers up sin and gives eternal life God thing emancipated by committed. Somebody shout amen. amen. Let's go to let's go to Psalm 92 to start with. Gonna be looking at about three scriptures this morning. Well more than that, but just three main scriptures. And those of you that like to take notes, those of you that that, uh, that, uh, that that like titles to messages, this title of this message is this Knowing Who You Are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Knowing who you are. In Christ Jesus. This is a uh, this message originally was preached about three about three years ago in a spiritual warfare series. But I got to looking at it and praying over it this morning. It goes along with what we what we preached last Sunday. That is confirmation of our confidence, and then goes 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 along with what we're preaching tonight at the uh, revival service. Uh, uh, it's all in the name. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that 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 a lot of Christians, they disregard what I'm going to say, but we're in a spiritual battle today. Amen. Amen. Uh, from the time you get saved, you new Christians, those of you that got saved this morning, I want you to hear me this morning. Uh, you started something today, amen, when you made this commitment to Christ. Uh, you started into a spiritual battle. And, and the Bible teaches us that we do not war against flesh and blood. We do, we do not make war against people. We don't make war against this world. But we make war against Satan and his demons. The Bible says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Amen? Now, I know just listening to that, that that'll make you depressed. Amen? That, that'll, that'll make you think that, that you might be defeated today. But I got news for you. As long as you know who you are in Christ Jesus, you cannot be defeated. Amen. See, you need to understand. Come on, somebody give God a clam clap praise today. And I want everybody to listen to me right now. Everybody listen to the preacher say amen. amen. The day you got saved, the day you cried out and asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, you come into covenant contract with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Do you understand that this morning? And just as with any contract or any covenant, you must know your rights or benefits under that contract or that covenant today. Because you do, listen, listen, when you become a child of God, there were certain things that become yours. Do you understand what, you, what I'm saying today? And see, the enemy doesn't want you to understand those rights. The enemy doesn't want to understand for you to understand your benefits. Amen? You know, when, when, you, when you sign a contract for a... For, an insurance, for health insurance or for life insurance, you need to know what your benefits are under that contract, amen? Or you may not use them all. I want to know what's all mine, amen? amen. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Is we're, going to, we're going to be talking about what's ours under our covenant contract with the Lord Jesus Christ. Because see, the devil doesn't want you knowing. And i got news for you. I'm tired of living down to somebody else's expectations. Amen. I'm ready to live up to what Christ has given me. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God? The devil wants to keep you oppressed. Some of you are walking under oppression this morning. Amen. Oh boy. Y'all ain't like that. Some of y'all are walking under oppression this morning. I can see it on your faces. Well, you know what? You know who's fuck? Body, calm down. Come on. Come on. You Come can on. blame it on the devil all you want. But you know whose actual fault it is? It's yours for not understanding your benefits today in Christ Jesus. Can you hear me today? For walking around like you were... You keep towing around on the eggshells. <laughs> Well, if I just ease through him, maybe won't nobody notice. 
quit this. Mm, y'all about to get over that and start walking boldly in Christ Jesus. He called you out to watch you fail. He's called you out to be successful and to succeed in your relationship with Him. Can somebody hear me today? Quit letting the devil oppress you. He's got some of you living in the past. Wanting to relive your past mistakes and your past failures. Listen, does that make any sense to somebody say amen? amen? Guess what? The day you got saved, Christ took all those away. Hallelujah. He done away with those. Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, but I'm pressing on. Are you pressing on this morning? Can somebody hear me today? Amen. Quit living under the oppression of the enemy. You see, he doesn't want you to realize who you really are in Christ Jesus. Here, let me tell you something. If you ever get a hold of that this morning, hello, if you get a hold of this this morning, you know what's going to happen? It's going to change the way the battle goes in your life. It's going to change you from struggling to a victory. Amen? Woo! Come on, somebody. It's going to change your life this morning. Christ Jesus, listen. Christ Jesus has given you the victory. The devil wants you to think guttural or lonely thoughts of yourself. Ooh, that just, that just got somebody. The devil wants you to think lonely or guttural thoughts of yourself. Amen? Let me tell you something. That ain't who you are in Christ. Amen. If you're a child of the Most High, the Most High God today, you are a daughter or a son of the King. That makes you a prince and a princess in the kingdom of God. Can somebody hear me today? Quit letting the enemy kick you. He wants you to believe you can't. But Jesus knows you can. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God today? Ephesians 6.10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Ephesians 1.19 And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us when we believe? According to the workings of His Mighty power. Ephesians 3.16 That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with all might by His Spirit in the inner man. You see, you can do it. Somebody look at your neighbor and say, we, we can do it. We can do it. We can do it. You can be an overcomer today. One person believed me on that. You can be an overcomer today through Christ Jesus. Amen. You just got to get it through your head. See, see, we quote these scriptures. We say these things. We know the words to say. We know what to do. We quote them. Boy, we, we can quote them. We can speak them. But my question to you is this this morning. Are you living them? Man, that's right. Are you living them? Some of you got healing right now, but you're still walking in your affliction because, because you won't stand there and try to birth your miracle. You see, faith is not a passive. Mm, faith is not a passive thing. Faith is an active thing. Amen? Right. Amen. Praise God. When God promises you a miracle, when God promises you a healing, God promises you a deliverance, begin to walk in it. Amen. Quit listening to the oppression of the enemy. Amen. Take authority over what he says to you and tell him, get out of my house, get away from my family, leave my spouse alone, leave my children alone. We're, we're people of the kingdom and you have no authority in this place. Can somebody give me praise in the house of God?
There's some of you battling with a stronghold right now. And the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God for the bringing down of strongholds. Amen. But you think that stronghold has got control in your life. That stronghold has no control except what you get it. God has given you what you need to overcome this morning, not walk in oppression. You just got to understand who you are, and you will overcome today. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God? Woo! I feel like preaching. Amen. Come on. Come on, bring it. And we ain't got to the message yet. Glory to God. But God's people, we, and I'm putting myself in there, we got to understand who we are. We got to understand what benefits we are. I reckon I should have titled this the benefits we have under the cover. Y'all can add that as a subtitle. Amen. Because we do have benefits under the covenant and the contract we have with Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? If everybody's got a Bible, hold them up, let me see them. Somebody shout amen. amen. If you're in Psalms 92, I want you to find verse number 1. I want you to stand when you get there out of reverence for reading the Word of God. How many of you are ready for a breakthrough this morning? Say amen. amen. How many of you are tired of having to walk in the mud when you need to be standing up walking on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ today? Well, I'm going to show you what you got to do to get free today. Amen? amen. To walk in triumph over the enemy's attack. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God? Amen? amen. Psalm 92, verse 1. It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Now let, let me stop right here for just a minute. Child of God, my brother and sister in Christ, you're talking and speaking too negative in your life. Amen. 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 Instead of moaning and groaning about your situation and circumstances, instead of asking God to change your the what I'm trying to be careful here. I, 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 I just got to say it. When you got problem in your family, when you got problem with your spouse, instead of praying for them, begin to pray for you and giving thanks to God in the middle of your problem, in the middle of your tribulation, and God will bring you to that place of victory over it. Can somebody hear me? We're too quick. Mm, careful, Bob. Come on. Come on. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your name, O Most High. Some of you ain't giving God the glory enough. That's right. Amen. And I can put me right in the middle of that too. Amen. We don't give God the glory enough to declare. Y'all need to underline that word declare in that scripture. To declare your loving kindness in the morning. You know what you need to be doing in the morning when you get up? You need to be declaring God's grace and God's mercy and God's provision in your life. You hear me? Instead of getting up with your head in your hand, moaning and groaning and saying, Oh Lord, what's going to happen today? You, Oh my God, somebody need to hear the preacher man this morning. Amen. You wake up whipping yourself. Oh, my God. Amen. oh, I'm talking to somebody in the house of God today. Amen. But declare His loving kindness, His grace, His mercy, amen, His ability to lift you above the flood in the morning. Amen. What's that old song? What's that, old, what's that commercial? The best part of waking up is folders in your cup. Amen. Amen. The best part of waking up is Jesus Christ in your life. Can somebody give me praise in the house of God? You got something to declare in the morning. Amen. And your faithfulness every night. You need to be 
declaring God's faithfulness over you and your household, over your family, before you go to bed every night. Amen? Amen. Amen. Instead of sitting there and... You know why most of you are losing sleep? Come on. I don't look at everybody this morning. I don't want nobody to think I'm picking on them. You know why you're losing sleep at night? You know why you're waking up unrested? Because you you thinking about all them things that's been going on and you've been sitting there mulling them over and, and chewing on them and, and worrying about them and, and fretting on them when the night before you go to bed, you begin to claim God's faithfulness. You became, began to proclaim God's power over these things. And I guarantee you, when you get up in the morning, you'll be singing a different song. Can somebody hear the man of God do that? Oh, I can't even get through the scripture without preaching this morning. Amen. <laughs> to declare whoo, your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness at night. On the instrument of ten strings, on the loop, on the heart, with harmonious sound. You know what God says? God says make a joyful noise. He never said nothing about you being in tune. Amen. Amen. God <laughs> likes the way you sound. Amen. I'm glad. Cool. Glory to God. I know what you mean, brother. Amen. For you. Somebody say Jesus. Jesus. For you, Lord, have made me glad. What makes you glad today? Well, what, what do you base your happiness on? Mm. I'm going to hurt somebody's feelings. If you basing it on finance, <clears throat> on a home, a house. Let me say house, because a home is not a house. That's right. Amen. A home is a family. A home is where family dwells in God. And God's in the middle of it. Amen. Amen. That's right. A house is just a is just a is just a place to sleep. But if you base it your happiness, your contentment on money. I'm known to look at some of the most happiest, joyous people in the Lord I've ever met. Been broke as a hand, amen. amen. <laughs> they were macaroni and cheese broke, peanut butter and jelly broke, but they were happy in the Lord. Can somebody give him praise in the house of God today? What is your contentment, your joy based on? You, Lord, have made me glad through your work. If you're born again today, you got something to be happy about. Amen. 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 You, you call yourself a child of God today, you got something to shout about. Amen. Amen. Can somebody hear me today? Amen. I will triumph. Now, somebody should have shouted on that side of the preacher. Amen. <laughs> I will triumph, uh, listen now, in the works of your hands. Amen. Amen. Not in what, let me tell you something, the harder you try, the further down the pit you're going. Amen. But when you turn it over to Jesus, you will triumph in the works of his hand. So say it the word of God today. Father, bless us today with your power, your presence, and your spirit. God, I pray right now in the name of you, you would open every eye, every ear, and every heart in this place to receive what you have in store through this, through this word of yours today, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that your Holy Spirit will begin to deal with us, God, and take us out of our negativity of life and bring us into positive faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. That we would begin to speak life and not death over our families, uh, over our spouses, over our children, over ourselves, God, and over every situation we have, God, that we would be able to believe you right now for the miracle, God, and begin to walk through to victory, Father God. Father, I pray under the power and the presence of your Holy Spirit that the baptism of your Holy Ghost would move in this place today to bring people ever closer to you. And Father God, I just ask you to forgive us all where we failed you, Lord. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us now, Father, that we can stand before you above reproach to ask for your mercy and grace. And God, I pray that your hand will be upon me, your mercy and grace will be poured upon me, that your words would be my words, your thoughts, my thoughts, your love in my heart, Jesus. That it flows out and touches everyone in the room. In Jesus' name we pray and say, we love you, Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated and give God a hand clap of praise in this place. Amen. Church, let me tell you something. To defeat Satan's lives, 
his snares, his tricks, his deceptions. You must know who you are today in Christ Jesus. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, let me tell you something, this is important. This is important. You must know that you're saved. Amen? You must know that you are His today. That He's the Lord of your life. You cannot walk around and say, well, I think I'm saved. Thinking you saved ain't going to cut it. Because if you just think you saved, you may not be saved. Amen? Amen. How do you know when you're saved? Because of the change in your life. Do you hear what I'm saying today? There's a change in your life. So if you know that Jesus Christ is the Lord is your Lord and Savior. If you have repented of your sins, if you have surrendered all authority, control, and you care of your life to Jesus, I want that to say again. All authority. Somebody say all authority. All, authority. all control. Come on. And all care. That, that's it. You gotta let him have it. You got to get your hands off of it. Some of you are too prideful to let it go. Trying to get everybody in here now. I done looked in the mirror this morning, amen? Some of you are too prideful to let it go. You still try, and it may be something small that you're still trying to hold on to. You got to let it all go. You got to give him all, not 99, not 99 percent. All authority, control, and care must go to him. Amen. Amen. And, and husbands, if you know your wife have a problem with this, pray for it. Wives, if you know your husband's having a problem with this, pray for it. And then come together in agreement over this. Amen. Because let me tell you something, you're an impregnable force as a couple in the Lord Jesus Christ in your marriage. Why? Because the two will become one flesh. Amen? Amen. When you, well, let me tell you something, if one mustard seed faith to move a mountain, guess what two will do? Amen. Oh, glory to God. Somebody get through on this. Amen. amen. Now there are seven things that you must identify your life with. And I may not get through all seven of them this morning. But it's seven things you must identify your life with to know who you are in Christ Jesus. I want you to write these down. Number one, you're no longer a sinner. We have a tendency. If you're born again today, you ain't what you were. Amen. You're something entirely different. You've been born again a child of God. Amen. The Bible said that if any man be in Christ, that word man means individual, be it man or be it woman. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Somebody say new. new. And that word new, if you look it up in the Greek, it don't mean something redone. It means something ain't never been before. Amen? Something that just come about. Oh, word, that's talking about being born again. Amen? He is a new creation. Old things. What part of that don't you understand? All things are gone. Amen. Hello? Amen. Some of you letting your past beat you up. Amen. Some of you are letting your past beat you up. You you and let me tell you something. You you gotta let me tell you something. I'm not happy about my past. I'm not happy about the things I did before I got saved. I'm not happy I'm not happy about the way I acted, the way I spoke, the way I lived. But those things no longer have authority over me because I've been born again a child of God. I am no longer what I was but something brand new in Jesus Christ. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Can somebody hear me today? <laughs> You're no longer a sinner dying and going to hell. But you are now a child of God with all the entitlements that go along with that position or standing in Jesus Christ. Do you understand? Amen. Hello? Then why is not the child of God living in those things? You see, you're entitled to God's divine and fatherly protection. I don't know about y'all, 
But when it comes to John Daniel, hey, if somebody messes with my baby, I'm sorry, they're going to be hell to pay. Amen? That's right. And it's to come on, somebody give God some praise on that because when somebody go to mess with you, don't think it don't make God mad. Don't think you don't get God riled up. Amen? And there's going to be hell to pay for those that come against His children. Amen? Because He said, Revenge is mine, saith the Lord. Can somebody Amen. give Him praise in the house of God? <laughs> you don't have to take up for yourself. God will take up for you. Hello? Uh, other one, not, not only does He got you back, but He's got you front too. Amen? He goes before you. <laughs> and you're entitled. You look at you can pray, oh Lord, oh Lord, help me. Amen? Come against my adversaries, Lord. I prayed that. I ain't going to lie with you. When I've had things come against me, I pray that. Amen? Amen. It's not doesn't mean that I don't forgive them. It just means I'm okay, telling Daddy, come, come fight this battle for me. Amen. Amen. Come, come, come fight this battle for me. You're entitled to that. Amen. You're entitled to God's fatherly protection, divine and fatherly protection. Amen. It's your right as a child of God. It says in Psalm sixty-one three, for they have been a shelter for me. And a strong tower from the enemy. Amen? Amen? The Lord, the name of the Lord is the strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. You're entitled to that. You can call on the name of the Lord when the enemy starts coming against you. When the adversaries start coming against you. You can cry out to God. You can run to Jesus for His divine and fatherly protection, and He will give it to you. Can somebody hear me today? Amen. Quit trying to fight that battle by yourself. You can't do it. Amen. Some of us are quick to draw a sword and try to fight, but we need to be sitting down letting God do it. Amen? Amen. He is our strong title. The second thing you're entitled to is this, is God's divine and fatherly provision. Let me tell you something. When I know, G, when I know John Daniel needs something, guess what? He gets it. Because that, that's part of my responsibility as a father. It's my responsibility as a father to protect him and to provide for him. And if we have that kind of responsibility here on this earth, if we, if we walk in that, how much more will our Heavenly Father, who is so much greater than us, walk in that responsibility? Amen? Am I getting through to anybody? Say amen. Amen. God will provide for your need. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I shall not need. Amen? Amen. But the problem is this. Sometimes... We're too prideful to ask you. You got to ask. God has knows what you need of before you ask. Amen. But God's going to see if you're faithful enough to ask Him for it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just gotta you gotta lay your lay all the time you gotta lay your pride aside. Amen. Is the Lord your shepherd? What's the shepherd do? The shepherd takes care of every need of the sheep. And not only that, he leads the sheep. Now that now, now sometimes sometimes when the shepherd's leading the sheep, he'll look around and he sees one that's going astray. And he'll have to stop everything and go get them and bring them back. And then take off again. And he'll look around and that same sheep is starting to wander off again. Now after a while, that shepherd gets tired of that. So when he gets up, catches up with that, that wandering sheep the last time, he'll take his staff and he'll break that sheep's leg. And then he'll very lovingly and very carefully put splints on it, pick that sheep up, and begin to carry it. And he'll carry that sheep until the leg heals. And you know what is so wonderful about that? When he puts that sheep back down, that sheep will never go astray again. It, it'll stay right by that shepherd's side. Amen. You know, sometimes we keep, you know, God, God's got exactly what we need. Amen. And he'll provide it for the Lord is our shepherd. We shall not want, amen. But sometimes we get to go on astray and go on astray and go on astray. Somebody hear me. And then God's got to finally break our leg, amen, amen. spiritually speaking. Amen. But then the Lord will pick us up. And he'll heal us. And he'll get us back to health. 
And you know what? We ought to, we ought to be so grateful when He sets us down, we'll never leave His side again. Because God gives us everything we need physically. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you. That you always, always having all sufficiency. All, mm, all sufficiency in all things. Can somebody give him praise? See, that's what grace is about. You may not deserve it, but God's still going to give it to you if you trusted in Him today. Amen? Amen. All grace abound toward you. All sufficiency and all things and may abound to every good work. So, boy, I got one about that. She's ready to jump up and shout. Amen? Some of y'all ought to be getting that way this morning. Woo! God's got everything you need physically. He can heal your body. Amen. 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 Look, I'm standing before you right now. If it wasn't for the hand of God in my I wouldn't be up here this morning. Amen. 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 Without God's healing, without God's hand, I'd be sitting somewhere in a chair trying to wonder if my heart was going to beat the next minute. But because God touched me and healed me physically, because God has kept His hand on me these past 15 years, I can stand here today and say that He has made all grace abound toward me and given me everything I need. He has provided for every need I have physically today. Can somebody give Him praise in the house of God? Spiritually. It says in Ephesians 3.16 that He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. Some of you don't, don't understand that today. That the Holy Spirit's got what you need right now Amen. to walk a life that is godly and dedicated to Him. Amen. You've all, you're, not, you're not having to wait on it. It's... Everybody listen to me say Amen. Amen. You've already got it. Hallelujah. Stop waiting on it when it's yours. Amen. You just got to start walking. The Bible says walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the Spirit. Give the Holy Amen. Spirit control. Amen. Let this Holy Spirit have control. Quit hindering it. Hello? Quit hindering it. Quit trying to walk contrary to what He's saying in your life and what He's doing in your life. Let him have control. Walk in the Spirit and you will not fill the lust of his flesh. Amen. Amen? You've already got it. Go ahead and use it and exercise it. Amen? Amen. Oh, my God. Spirit, materially. God will give you what you need materially. Philippians 4, 19. But my God shall supply of all you need. Now, let me tell you something. Some of us, Try to live above our needs. Mm. Amen. In other words, we got champagne appetites on beer bank accounts. I hate to put it that way, but it's just true. Amen. Amen. We trying to eat caviar and all we can afford is pretzel. Glory to God. Amen. Come on. You know, you trying you trying to you trying to put steak on the table when all you need is baloney. Come on, somebody. We try to live above our means. And, and you know something, when we try to do that, yeah, that's pride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Amen. Amen? And when you begin to, begin to live within your need and let God supply for all your needs according to His riches and glory, God will start to pull out some blessing on you. Can somebody hear me today? Amen. He'll make you the head and not the tail. Amen. He'll, be, he'll start to go above and beyond as long as you start trying to live within your need. Amen. Am I making sense to you? Say amen. amen. Humble yourself. You know, I don't really need that, Lord. I'm satisfied with what you've given me. God's going to look down and say, look at my baby. And he's going to begin to pour out on you. Amen? Can somebody understand that this morning? Amen. Amen. I love it when, you know, John Daniel would come up and he said, you know, he'll be, I said, he'll be looking at something and he said, you know, I, he says, I want that. 
I said, baby, you really want that? He'll look at me and say, no, I don't need it, Daddy. And you know what that makes Daddy want to go do? Go it makes Daddy want to go out and get it for him. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's the way God is. Amen. You begin to live and be satisfied and be content with what He's already given you and begin, and listen, begin to give Him praise and glory. Am I making sense right yes. now? Amen. And begin to give Him praise and honor and glory over what He's given you. It may not be a mansion. It might not be an F-250 with all the bells. Amen. It may not be Gucci shoes and the latest <laughs> designer clothes, but it, it's, it survives the purpose. Amen. You begin to give Him praise for that. Begin to give Him glory for that. God's going to look down that you say, well, let's just pour some blessing out on these children right now, amen. And he'll open the bucket over you. Can somebody hear the man of God this morning? So God can, amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God can. Amen. amen. How do, and emotionally. God can. <laughs> Ooh, I'm, uh, oh. Some of you got problems with your emotions. Amen. Hello? Sure. Because, because number one, if you don't get you your way, the first thing you do is, is poke out your lips and, and blow out your cheeks, amen, go to power. Mm. You don't get your way. You're like a little two-year-old. You ever see a two-year-old in the drugstore wanting some cookies and you tell them no, they can't have none? And they fall out on the floor? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen some 13 to 14 year olds do that. And I got news for you. I've seen some 40 and 45 year olds do that too. Amen. 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 Oh boy, I could go on with that, but I'm going to leave it alone. Amen. You know, John Daniel, when he was little, he went through that little old phase when you tell him no, he'd fall down on the floor, go to pitching him a fit. And you know what me and Lisa would do? He said he'd do that, drop out on the floor, just go to and I don't care where we was at. We was in the grocery store, wherever, he started picking, we just step over him and just keep on going, amen. <laughs> and eventually he'd realize something. He was in the room by himself. And he'd get up and come in the room we was in and start doing it again. And we just step over and go back to where we just come from, amen. <laughs> and eventually he found out that it didn't do no good. You're going to pitch it in fits with God. You know what God's going to do? God's just going to step on you and keep going and go to the other room. And eventually you're going to realize something. It ain't about what you want. It's about what He wants. Amen? amen. Am I getting through to anybody? Say amen this morning. Amen. Quick. <laughs> How many of you know I love you this morning? Amen. Quit being a spoiled brat and start doing what God's calling you to do. Amen? Quit getting so emotional. Amen. Quit letting them control. Am I getting through to anybody? Quit letting your emotions control Amen. me this morning. Amen. 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 Whoo, glory to God. You, you let, and, and guess what? I'm motivated. I may not get off this first point this morning. Some of you, emotionally, of basing your happiness, your contentment, your satisfaction in life on another person. Amen. 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 And you know what? Ain't never gonna happen. Amen. Cause I don't care how I don't care how good they are, they're always gonna disappoint you. The Bible says, "Do not put your trust in princes of men." Amen. Amen. Why? Because you're gonna get disappointed. As perfect as I am, I'm just pointing Lisa every now and then. Uh. Amen? Uh. I'm glad she ain't him. Glory to God. I'm glad she done gone to the back. Glory. Let me tell you something. You try to base your happiness, your contentment, your satisfaction in life on another person, you ain't never going to be happy. Amen. Amen. But if you base it on your relationship with Jesus Christ, amen, the lack of sorrow, the lack of sadness, the lack of disappointment in your life is not based on emotion, but based on your relationship with Jesus Christ and where you are with Him in your life. Can somebody give Him praise today, amen? amen. Philippians 4, 7 said, And the peace of God, 
which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let God be, be, be your satisfaction. Let God be your peace today. Let God be your comfort today. Let Jesus be your consolation today. Amen. Let Jesus be the one you depend on. I'm not sick. Ooh. It's got to all be about Jesus. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying to you today? It's, he's got to be the one in control. He's the one that's got to be in control. He's the one that's got to protect you. He's the one that's got to provide for you physically, spiritually, mentally, and emotionally. It's got to be about Jesus, amen? Well, what else are we entitled to? Guess what? You're entitled to the protection of God's mighty angels today. How many know God put a hedge of protection around you? Amen? 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 He will put a hedge of protection around you today and watch over you. You know, every, every day, every day, every night. See, I know this. And every day and every night, I pray that hedge of protection around, around, around Lisa, John, and myself and around our home. Amen? Because, see, I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it because I'm a child of God. You're entitled to it if you're a child of God today. You're entitled to protection that has your protection, the protection of God's mighty angels around you. Psalms 91, 11 through 12. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bag you up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. He'll watch over you. He'll send those angels to look over you. Amen? Amen. But some of us don't get it. We think we're out there all by ourselves. We think we're by ourselves. We think we're, 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 we're nobody cares about me. We got any brats that do that in here? Don't raise your hand. <laughs> nobody knows. Cold I feel. Nobody knows but me. How many of you ever, don't raise your hand, how many of you ever done that before? Pity yourself. You get in your pity pit and you just like to wallow in it. You like to get out in that mud and just get it all over you. And then you want to try to drag somebody else down there with you. Try to throw a gift trip on people. Boy, I'm getting some strange looks from some of y'all. Y'all know I'm talking straight to you now. Well, guess what? I ain't getting down in that mud with you. I stand out here on the side and I reach down. I help pick you up. Amen? But instead of, instead of moaning and groaning, remember that God's got a hedge of protection around you and the only time that you begin to wallow in that mud, the only time you begin to walk into oppression, the only time you begin to walk in defeat is when you get outside of that hedge. You get out from under the protection of the blood. Can you hear me today? As long as you're walking by faith and not by sight, God will keep you in His hand and place a hedge of protection of his mighty angels around you today. Can somebody hear the man of God? Quit acting like a spoiled brat. Lord. And start tanning up and standing up and getting a hold of some of your entitlements from Jesus. Amen? Start understanding who you are in Jesus. Mm, boy, I'm thinking something, but I can't say it. <laughs> Come on. Jesus loves you today. And He's got exactly what you need. Amen? And the thing about it is, if you understand this this morning, if you begin to get a hold of this, we're not going to finish this this morning. I'm going to continue this on next week. But I want you to be thinking about what we talked about today. You're no longer who you were. But you are now a blood-bought, born-again child of God. Amen. With all the entitlements of that position. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because Jesus loves 
you. Do you understand that today? He's got everything you need today. If you'll just get up and come on. If you'll just get up and let him have it. Quit wilding. Some of you letting the devil try to drag you back to where you started. Amen. I'm letting that soak in. Brother Ronnie, come on. Some of you are wondering where the blessings have gone. Hello? Well, guess what? The blessings ain't gone nowhere. It ain't God's fault you ain't being blessed right now. He wants to bless you. The blessing is you walked away from where he had you at originally. Am I making sense to anybody? Say amen. amen. See, we've been, we've been blaming it on the world, on the preacher, on the people of the church, on the devil. Well, it ain't nobody's fault but our own because we walked, we're not where we were when we first started. We, we, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't gone on in grace. We, we've reverted. We're no longer trusting God like we once were. We no, we're no longer excited like we once were. We're no longer doing the first works. Do the things you've done at first. Do you remember what you've done at first? Remember when you first got saved and you were so fired up? I'm told, come on now, somebody hear me this morning. You got to come back to your first love. You got to come back and do the first words. I've seen you. I've seen you so on fire that they couldn't touch you with an asbestos glove without getting burned. Amen? Amen. And then all of a sudden you got cooled off. Something, something happened. You began to listen to the lies of the enemy. Listen to the lies of the world. Well, brother, you like you was doing better before you got saved. What's going on with you now? No, before you were dying and going to hell. No matter what you've done, it wasn't doing you a bit of good. But now, you're alive in Christ and going to heaven. Amen. And you're entitled to all the blessings of a child of God. But you got to put your eyes on it. Come back to your first love. Who's your first love? Jesus. Amen. Start doing the things you've done at first. The things that, that you know what? When you've done them first, what Jesus looked down at you and said, Oh, look at my children. Woo! He was so excited. You say, but preacher, they were, they were so, they, I didn't know what I was doing. That didn't make a difference. Jesus still loved it. Amen. Come back. I'll never forget one of my first mentors when I got saved. He and I were sitting there talking one day, and this man encouraged me at every, every step. Amen. And I just thought he was, he was you know, the proverbial uh, old man of the mountain, that he was just full of wisdom. And we were sitting there talking one day, he looked at me and said, You know something, you, you encouraged me so much. And I was shocked. I said, brother, how can I encourage you? I don't even know what I'm doing. He said, no, what encourages me is your childlike faith. He said, Jesus said that you believe it and you go on about your business. And from that day forward, I started praying, Lord, never let me lose that childlike faith. And still today, if Jesus says that I believe it, that's all, Amen. I ain't going to argue with you. I'm not going to bait with you. Jesus said it. I believe it. Amen. Amen. I'm not going to give place to the devil in my life. Because he has no place there. Amen. I've been given the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. I've been given, given the promises of God. I've been given the word of God. I've been given the, the divine protection and provision of God. I know who I am. Do you know who you are? 
If you don't, you need to come to this altar this morning. And let's get it all worked out. Amen. There's some of you walking oppressed today because you don't realize God's got all you need. Quit depending on things in this world. Quit depending on people. And let God have it. Amen. Remember, He can provide for you uh, 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 physically, materially, emotionally, and spiritually. They have your Sometimes, Your problem today started with a seed that was so small you couldn't even see it. It's a weed that's come up in your life. You've been plucking at the leaves trying to get rid of it. But it keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. And you'll pluck those leaves, but the stem stays and the root's still intact. The Lord Jesus Christ said this morning, let him pull it up by the roots. Let him cast it out of your life. Give him the authority over it. You turn it loose. Lay down that last little bit of pride you have in your life. Let him remove it, and you'll see it no more forever. Thus saith the Lord God this morning. Amen. It's up to you. Come this morning and say, Lord, it's yours. Pluck this weed out. I'm tired of being oppressed and depressed. I'm tired of fighting this same battle over and over and over. Lord, I'm tired. Come and make a difference. Lift me above the flood. Let me walk in victory and triumph today. Nay, in all these things, you are more than conqueror through him who loves you. For greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world today. Get a hold of it. It'll change life. I'll head your back. All eyes are closed. There's nobody looking. Emotions settled, feelings tried. I can't seem to redeem all the tears that I've cried. And it seems as if there's really no way home. And I've tried to find the strength to carry on. I move back so. I wonder why I try to find the ways to turn back the time I find out more and more the reasons for my life The answers feel so far from me I seek the light When the waves wash ashore I feel the sand move away I look down at the footprints that haven't washed away And I feel myself lighter than the air And I see there's more than just my pair There's just one